Garant, uh, you work in uh, cosmology, working on galactic structure, working on gravitational lenses where you can uh, get the sense of space-time due to some uh, Einstein perturbations. Uh, uh, in, in all this work, which is, people have been doing for decades, uh, what's the value of, of uh, a fine-tuning perspective? Well, the question really grows out of uh, the research that's come out of the last couple of decades and this discovery that we have uh, an accelerating expansion of the universe. So this was the big discovery at the end of the 90s. Right. We need some other energy density in the universe that gives us uh, accelerated expansion. And we know that can't be matter. It can't be anything like normal Respect. materials. Gravity. It's Gra the, the gravity other attracts. direction. <laughs> it, it attracts. So we need something to repel. Right. And this harks back to ideas that Einstein had about this cosmological constant term and anti-gravity. So we find that we have uh, this stuff in the universe. We really don't know what it is, so we give it a sexy name, like dark energy. <laughs> and when we look at the sort of energy density that we have in dark energy, and compare it to our theoretical calculations, this is where there's this huge discrepancy. We have the uh, observed values at 10 to the 120 uh, times smaller than the theoretical expectations that we get. Now this is the so-called energy density of an absolute vacuum. Yes. So there's nothing in it. There's no molecules in it theoretically, no atoms, nothing. That's right. In, in, this, in this space. But yet there is, due to the laws of quantum mechanics, some sort of a, a, a pressure, particles and w wavelengths and various things Th like that. That's right. So, so you add that all together. So if you imagine you've got an empty box in the universe, of course in classical physics an empty box is empty. Right. But when you add the quantum mechanical aspects, then you get particles popping in and out of existence. You get your electrons popping in and out of existence, all this quantum vacuum stuff. And you can add up the energy density that's in an empty vacuum due to these quantum fluctuations. Mm. And the big problem is, is that you have to add up all of these terms and we don't really know where to stop the integral. So people choose the Planck energy scale as the, the natural scale where we can cut this thing off. And that gives us this, this huge amount of energy per volume of space compared to what we observe. So the question is, is why does our universe have any of this stuff in it at all? If we had gone out and done our study and found that the universe only had matter in it, I think most astronomers would be very, very happy. But we find that there's this sliver of dark energy, which is sat there basically hidden away doing nothing for most of the first half of cosmic history. And because, that, because everything was small and there wasn't that much space in which to have this. Yeah, well, there was, there was less space, but matter density was higher. In the past, yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah, so the matter dominated, and now it's thinned out, and now dark energy has taken over. Yeah, right. be, because dark energy is the same in, in, in a given volume of space. Yes. Whereas as matter spreads out, the space grows or however it works so that the density of matter gets less, but the density of, of, of this energy doesn't get less. That's right. So it has a higher percentage of the total. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, we've, we're now in an epoch where this stuff dominates and it will now always dominate. And get more and more so. Yes. Matter will get more and more thinned out, which uh, has implications for the future history of the universe. Okay. So the question is, is then why do we have uh, you know, 10 to the minus 120th the amount of dark energy that theory tells us we should? And this goes back to this notion of the multiverse, uh, whereby uh, we have this inflationary epoch, we've formed all these little bubbly universes, and they've all got their own little laws of physics, and ours was born with this just sliver of dark energy left in there. So the question that we wanted to tackle is, well, what if our universe had been born with slightly different dark energy properties. So we can do this, right? We, we simulate chunks of the universe on a computer. We can put in the matter density soon after the Big Bang. The formation of stuff in the universe is a battle essentially between cosmic expansion and gravity pulling mm -hmm. things together. Mm -hmm. So we have the mathematical framework. We can just put in the amount of dark energy that was, was in there. And again, at the start, it's always dormant because matter was such high density, but it means that if you make dark energy more concentrated, there's more of the stuff at the start, then it comes to take over earlier and earlier in the history of the universe. And that's bad for the formation of things like galaxies. So we've got matter pooling together in the early universe, that crashes down, mainly dark matter, crashes down, taking gas with it, that gas pools to the center, forms a galaxy which is made of stars, in those stars you create the elements that give the elements that form you and I. Right. If dark energy kicks in earlier, it can shut off that initial formation. And you don't have to increase dark energy by much. A factor of 10 
possibly we could get away with it, we could still have enough time to form some galaxies. But you push high up to a factor of 100 times, etc., then you shut off galaxy formation. You, sh you shut off the when formation. You say 100 stars. times, that, that means from the, the uh, discrepancy from 10 to the 120th, that would be from to 100 to the 118. Correct. <laughs> it, wouldn't, so, it wouldn't be the 10, it would be the 118. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we're still talking about a sliver. Of, of dark energy compared to the, right, the right. natural value. So again, we might have this sea of universes out there in the multiverse, and others have gotten crazy amounts of dark energy. Like the, if you've got the full amount of the theoretical expected, oh, then yeah. boom, yeah. then you know, there's, the, there's a universe between every hydrogen atom, and that's <laughs> it, you know, no yeah. structure formation. But you know, there might be a few that have these slivers around there. So it seems to be, at the moment, the only sort of natural expectation, well, straightforward natural expectation. People are hoping that maybe this integral that they've done is wrong and somehow the upper limit will come down and leave us no. naturally with this sliver. But it seems, you know, then you've got to fine tune effectively the limit of the integral, which itself is, is problematic. Right. And, and then even if you get there, the question is, why is that suitable for life? That's a separate issue. That, that, <laughs> right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and if it went the other direction, if it, if it got smaller and smaller or, or went negative, so you have negative, negative, so that would just cause an immediate attraction. So you'd have a sudden universe of black holes or something. Absolutely. You, you, we, zero would have been the best value. I said if yeah. it had come out to be none at all, yeah. everyone would have been happy. Right, but that, that's that's all. When you see something at at, at, at with a hundred a hundred and twenty decimal places of zeros and then a one, yes. you think you made a mistake and it really is zero. That's right. But that's not the case. That's not the case. So. Again, you, you, have, you need some mechanism to, to deal with this theoretical expectation. And you would hope that whatever the mechanism does, it would be natural to multiply by zero so there's none left. But multiply by a factor to leave you this sliver, that's really worrisome.